Hey, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Rukakodash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS. These are the men that taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this gospel in all sincerity in these last days. Shalawam also to the few awkward sisters who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shad Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And as usual, we're out here week in and week out you know, to prophesy the downfall of this kingdom that's run by Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Okay? And we're calling up onto our people, the sons of Israel, who are the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and the Latinos. We're calling them to repent, okay? To repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And before the kingdom of heaven comes, you know, destruction comes first. This kingdom that we're living, that's all wickedness, you know, it needs to go down before the kingdom of heaven comes. A kingdom where righteousness is going to rule again. Our savior, Yahweh Shai, is going to rule Everyone is going to feel okay in the kingdom, except for the wicked, Esau, Edom. You know, they have to get their payback. You know, they've done so much wickedness in the world. You know, they've, they've, they've turned the truth up, upside down. They've done wickedness to, to the sons of Israel, you know. So they get their payments back. They've killed, they've done a lot of wicked. You know, the scripture tells you in the book of Revelation, he that killeth with a sword must die by the sword. Okay, and he that taketh into captivity shall surely go into captivity, roughly paraphrasing. So this is the just balance of the Most High Yahabah Shemiah Shai. Payment is coming, retribution is coming to the sons of the wicked. So, you know, we're out here to call our people to wake up, you know, to repent before it's too late. Because destruction is coming. Now, I'd like to start off with a scripture. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 22. It says, The light of the body is the eye. And if therefore that eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if that eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? You know, for the so called Negroes, Native Americans, and the Latinos. You have to wake up and come out of the wickedness, the different philosophies and your vain dreams of this kingdom. You know, you have to embrace your, 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 what's your heritage, you know, which this truth, the law, statutes, and commandments are your heritage, you know, so as the sons of Israel. The laws were given unto, unto the house of Israel and unto the house of Israel alone. So you have to come back and embrace this this heritage and come out of the wickedness that you've been taught all your life by the so-called white man, okay? Your dreams are vain, you know? All your, 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 your desires according to this world, it's all vain, man, you know? Your eyes need to be single and single to the kingdom to come. Yahweh Shai taught us how to pray. And they say you should pray for his kingdom to come, you know? That's the mindset, you know, we should all find ourselves praying for the kingdom to come because once the kingdom come, you're going to be okay. In the kingdom here you're never going to be okay you're never going to be seen as equal as the so-called white man you're never going to get the same opportunities the so-called white man has because this is his kingdom and this is his time to rule you know so it keeps saying verse 23 it says but if that I be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is the darkness and that darkness represents you know ignorance in which the majority of the world is walking in darkness, abject darkness, you know. They don't know their left, their right. They don't see. The book of Psalms tell you that um, thy words are a lamp unto my feet. You know, these words are the lamp. It's the light that's going to guide and direct you, you know, 
to the kingdom to come, to happiness, joy, and rest. Because you can never get rest in this kingdom, you know? So it says, verse 24, For no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the most high Yahweh Shem Shai and Mammon. And that's true, man. You know, you can't serve the most high Yahweh Shem Shai and think of, uh, and think of, you know, becoming whatever in this kingdom. The other apostle Taha made a, a video, I think, yesterday, while he was speaking about, you know, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and the Latinos, the Israelites that are working in high institutions for the so-called wicked. You know, being part of the military of the wicked. You know, being part of their their med medicinal um, what do you call it? Being part of their their just being part of the rulership. You know, the celebrity thing. You know, the the the, the top musician thing. You know, looking for your piece of this kingdom. The Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is going to destroy you. You know, you can't call yourself a true follower of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, and you, your heart is still working in order to to progress the kingdom of this so-called white man that's ruling today. You know, it's not done. The Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is not mocked. So you can't worship two, two, two masters. You know, it's either you hate one and love the other better. You can't worship the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai and go after money. You know, so you, you really need to give, give away one. Your eyes need to be single towards the kingdom that's coming. And you see, this is going to be the snare that's going to, you know, be a stumbling block to many of our, our, of our, of our, of our people. Remember now. Let's let me quickly get this. Let me get this scripture. Let me get this quick, this quick scripture because this is going to be a stumbling block for many of our brothers. You know, giving up that money. This is the book of Matthew. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 4. I'll start from the first verse. And this is when, you know, Satan, Satan tempted our Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, he tempted, he tempted him with a lot of riches, with everything, with, with the glory of the world. You know, but our Savior, he, he paved, he paved um, the way for us. He made the perfect example of how we should react in such situations, you know. Situations are going to come where these devils are going to come with some offers, you know. And if your eyes are not single to the kingdom of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, you fall a victim. The scripture tells you in the book of um, Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, the twelfth, um, the twelfth chapter, the tenth verse. It says, "Never trust thine enemy, for as iron rusted, so is his wickedness." You know, you can never trust the, the enemy, and the enemy is Esau, Edom, and the rest of other nations. But the, the, the head of this enemy is, is Esau Edom, the so-called white man that's ruling today. You can't trust him, you know. So this is the book of uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter. It says, Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the spirits into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, command that these stones be made bread. You know? And this is the devil, you know, trying to tempt our Savior Yahweh Shai, in which this is the spiritual devil, but the physical counterpart is the so-called white man that's ruling today. And that's how this man is going to come to you, you know? He's going to try to tempt you. He's going to try to, 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 to shift your course from what's the, the major thing, you know, seeking the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai with all your heart is going, to, is going to tempt you and deceive you with all different kinds of promises, with all different kinds of, um, of false, falsehood, you know, and witchcraft and magic to deceive and, and, and shift your, your attention, you know. We have brothers who the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has blessed with physical abilities, you know, in the sports world, you know, they, 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 they can run, they can sprint, you know. That we have brothers which the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has blessed with, you know, the voice of singing, the talent of creativity, you know. But all this has nothing to do 
in, um, in establishing the kingdom, man, these are just extras, you know. And this is this is this is what you're meant to be as a son of Israel, because we are the salt of the earth, man. You know, the Most High has given us a spirit, a spirit of creativity, and it's a normal thing, man. You, you're not meant to use that creativity to entertain the devils or be an instrument in the hands of the devils that are ruling today, you know. So he says, and when the tempter came. Verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. This is the response of our Savior Yahushai. You know, Satan came to tempt him when he was hungry, you know, because times are coming, you know, a lot of famine is coming, sword and pestilence, okay? And we can see what's going on in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. What it's going to generate is only famine, man. We're going to get to a point where people are going to move back into cannibalism. They start eating themselves up because for, they, they lack food, you know. We're getting into those times, man. The days ahead are really terrible, you know. So what's going to happen? This devil is going to come with his offers, you know. I'll give you bread, you know. Just take what I have to offer. And you know what he has to offer? The next step is the MOTB. You know, that's what's written in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, you can read from the 16th verse all the way down. You know, that's his next plan. So he's going to come to you at that very moment when he knows you're needy, when he knows you're vulnerable, you know. That's why he has to, he has to generate this famine, you know, in order to get people on their knees begging for a solution, you know. That's why, you know, these scriptures is really beautiful because the scriptures opens your eyes and it takes you out of darkness. You know, it helps you to, to differentiate who is who. It helps you to understand who is with you and who is against you, man. You know, but if you're, if, you're, if you're not following this truth the way we teach it here in Great Millstone, you're just going to be wandering like a, like a dry leaf, you know, being blown through and full, um, you know, with, like, with the wind, you know. You wouldn't understand who is your enemy and you wouldn't understand who is your, who, who, who is, who, who, who is your friend, you know. So he says in verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into the, into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of the Most High, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. You know? And you see, this, this verse right here, it tells you that, you know, Satan, the devil himself, he knows the scriptures really well, you know, because he, and for him to know the scriptures, it lets you know that he knows about the truth, because the truth writes, it lies here in the scriptures, you get what I'm saying, you know, so he uses the truth against you, you know, when it, com when it comes to you, he doesn't just come and tell you stupid lies, just like what he did in the garden, you know, he told, he told Eve that thou shalt not surely die if you eat that fruit, you know, for the day you shall eat that fruit shall become like God. It tells you a fraction of the truth. Then it, it comes with a very subtle lie that's going to destroy you. You know, so these devils, they know the truth. Because in order for you to lie, it means you know the truth. And then he manipulates the truth and uses it against you. You know, so you can't be deceived. The scripture gives you the footprint of everything of how to discern who the devil is, you know, and who the workers of the Most High are. So you see, the devil is going to quote his Bibles to you, you know, just like just like now in this kingdom, it's, it's going to come, you know, he's going to come and tell you, oh, like the so-called um, apologist, you know, the, um, the, 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 the group of Vocab Melon, you know, the big head, Heman Melon, you know, his group, you know, they use the Bible to deceive our people and you have lots of jakes now, you know, falling for this trickery. But who kept, um, who kept Vocab Melon in that position where he is? You know, the so-called white man that's in power, man. Vokab Malone is walking and he's doing the bidding of the devil who kept him there. And he's a devil, you know. So you see, they use the scriptures, they manipulate it, and they use it against you. You know, that's why you really have to be rooted in this truth. You know, that's why the scripture tells you that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. If you don't have the wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures, man, you're going to be tossed to and fro. Let me see if I can get that scripture real quick.
You just bear with me. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 14. It says, so I'll start, from, I'll start from verse 12. I'll start from 11. Okay, Slakia. It says, And he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the works of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Hamashiach, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive so you get what i'm saying okay he said this truth is going to in other words this truth is going to root you it's going to make you solid okay so you don't become victim tossed to and fro by wind of every doctrine man you know you can't go after every doctrine that's been pushed to you there is one true doctrine and that true doctrine has no different interpretation just like the book of um the book of um this first peter no second peter this is the book of second peter chapter 1 verse 2 it says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation okay this scripture is not of multiple interpretations it's only of one interpretation and that truth is right here in great millstone there is a 100 percent truth and that truth is found in great millstone gms you know the rest of the people they don't teach you the full truth you know they always subtract something out of it. They take something out of it. They had something to read, in which the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai is going to punish all these men that are doing such. So the point, going back to the book of um, of um, Matthew, the fourth chapter, you know, when verse five, when the devil quotes the Bible for Yahweh Shai and he tells him that you know jump, you know the angels are going to guide you. They use the scriptures against you because the devil knows the scriptures, you know. These devils that are, that are operating under the, the, the power of the spiritual Satan, they all know the scriptures and they can manipulate it to you, you know. They know the scriptures in the wicked way, you know. They turn it to a stumbling block for you if you're not well-rooted. You know, that's why you really need to be well-rooted in the scriptures so that you're not tossed to and fro, okay. Verse 6. No, verse 7. Verse 7, Yahweh Shai said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt thy Lord, thy power. Okay? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. And you see, this is a scenery of what goes on in this kingdom today. You know, there are many of our brothers who are sold out, you know, they're sold out to do evil. They prefer to follow the ways of the wicked Esau, Edom. They prefer to be, to be kept in certain, you know, positions in the society to be as, um, to be as a stumbling block to, to, to divert the attention of our people, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans and the Latinos 
and make them to commit sins and abomination, you know, against our most high Yahweh Shimei Oshai. You know, they, 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 they call you, you know, they present you with a beautiful contract. You know, they tell you this is how much money you get every week. This is how much money you get every month. You know, they make it look sweet, you know, so you can accept. And this is all, this is all deceit from Satan himself, you know. That's why many of our brothers, you know, they fall victims for these things. You know, they sign up contracts, they sell their souls to the Satan, and they become instruments in the hands of Satan, you know. In which this is an abomination. We're meant to be instruments in the hands of the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai. The Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai has chosen us out of every nation, you know. We are a peculiar nation that he has chosen to him for himself, you know. So you shouldn't do the bidding of, of Satan. And you see... I'm saying all this because in the times that are coming, there are going to be more temptations, more enchantments, and more sorceries to come, you know, because this is how Satan, this is how he rose, man, you know, this is how he rose, enchantments, sorceries, and witchcraft, and all these things, this is how Satan rose, you know, so many of our brothers, if you're not rooted in this truth, you're all going to be sifted out, man, you're going to become slaves to the Satan, and the Most High Yahweh Shemiah Shai will destroy you at the return of His Son Yahweh Shai. You know, so this is a, this is a beautiful example right here. The Savior Himself, he, re he replies in the verse eight. He says, "Again, the devil take him up into a no." No, verse ten. Then Yahweh Shai said unto him, "Get thee and Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh by Shemiah Shai thy power and him only." Shall thou serve? And the devil liveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So you see, when you rebuke the devil in the name of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, the devil is going to flee you. You know, the scripture tells you to resist the devil, and he's going to flee. Let's get that scripture. James 4, 7. This is the book of James, chapter 4. I'm going to start from verse 7. It says, Submit yourself, therefore, to the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, this is it. If you resist the devil, the devil is going to flee from you. Okay, now when you get into this truth, you become separated through the spirit, man. This word is going to wash you and turn you to a clean man from the inside out, you know. People that are of the world, they start seeing a sudden change in you and they start cutting themselves off, you know. They start cutting themselves off. They start seeing you strange. They start seeing you like a different person. Why? Because you are no longer part of the world. That goes to the scripture right there. John fifteen nine nineteen. This is the book of John 15, 19. It says, If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. You see? So if you're not of the world, people start seeing you strange. You know, the devils that are around, they start, they start fleeing from you, man. You know? They start fleeing. They start sorting themselves out automatically. At least for myself, that's how it happened. You know, coming into this truth, being baptized by the water of this word, you know, the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai kept the spirit on me, in which the people who were not meant to be around me, they saw me, and you know, they started, you know, eliminating themselves by themselves. So if you resist the devil, he's going to flee. You know, and most especially, you know, we were reading from the book of um. We 
we're reading from the book of Matthew. I think I lost a count of what we were reading. We were reading the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, you know. We're reading from Matthew, the sixth chapter. It says, um, I'll, read, I'll read again from verse, the reason why we went into all this. I'll start from verse 22. It says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the Most High Yahweh, Shem Yahushai, and Mammon. You know? And this is the reason why we went into all this. Because temptations are going to come. You know? In this time that we're going, get, we're getting always closer to the, to the, to, to, to Jacob's trouble, you know? We're getting closer and closer to Jacob's trouble. There are going to be a lot of temptation, you know? Many brothers have succeeded, you know, in not being a um, victim to the, to the Vicky Jews, you know, that, that, that thing, that poking, that poking um, stuff that's been poked in your shoulder, the Vicky Venom, okay? People have resisted it, but a time is coming in which things are always going to get much more harder, in which they're going to fall for the next one that's coming. And the next one that's coming is the MOTB, that thing that looks like a grain of rice that's going to be inserted under your skin. Without it, you can't buy it yourself, you know? So if you don't have the most high Yahweh Hashem Shai really dealing with you, you're going to fall and you're going to collect that thing because more temptation is going to come. And that's because the people really, they don't believe in the return of our Savior, man. You know, they just say it, they say it with their mouth, but truly in their hearts, they don't believe that our Savior, Yahweh Shai, is going to return and, and, and redeem the kingdom back to us. They truly don't believe, you know. So he says, and that's because their eyes is not single, man. Their eyes is not single. They're serving the most high Yahweh Hashem Shai, but low key, they're serving also mammon. They're serving this world, you know? And when you come into this truth, man, you're going to catch a lot of hell. You're going to catch a lot of hell because that's what it is. Because you're coming out of this world. You're no longer a part of this world, but you're living in this world. And the most time makes you a new person, an absolutely new person, you know? Let me read the book of, um, the book of, um, of Matthew. The seventh chapter, verse 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. You need to enter through the straight gate. Now, let's get the meaning of that word straight. Let me get the blue letter. So you see. Verse 13, Matthew chapter 7, 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Okay, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So the word straight goes to the word to the Greek word, it says stenos. Okay, stenos. It says narrow, straight, and it says it's the base word of, let's see.
So it says the road is narrow, okay, and it has obstacles, man, okay, close about. And um, let's get the book of, um, let me get it with my phone. To give more explanation, Second Esdras gives a better explanation of that road, of how it is. This is the book of Second Esdras, the seventh chapter, the second verse. It says, And he said unto me, Up Esdras, and hear the word that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on my power. Then he said unto me, The sea is, at, is set in a wide, in a wide place, that it may be deep, it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance, where the narrow and like a river. Who then could go in into the sea to look upon it, to rule it, if he went not through the narrow? How could he come into the broad? Okay, so this is speaking of the road, that road that leads to life eternal, that straight road that's been spoken of in, um, in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the thirteenth verse. Okay. And it says, it says in verse 7, it says, The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there was a fire on the right hand and on the left hand a deep water. This is how narrow and how dangerous that road is, the road that leads to life eternal. Okay? It's a road in which only one person can walk at a time. Okay. Verse 8 it says, And one only part between them, but even between the fire and water, so small that there could but one man go there at at once. Okay. So you see, it is really difficult to get into this kingdom without sacrifice. Okay. There is a lot of sacrifice to do. That's why the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, it tells you present your bodies as a living sacrifice it is told that you're going to catch a lot of hell you know because that easy road is the road that leads to death and destruction as said here in verse 14 oh verse 15 oh sorry verse 13 it says enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat you know Many people are going to take the easy way out. You know, that's why many of our brothers are selling out their souls, you know, for crumbles, man. They just really want to make it so hard that they, they don't care selling their souls for a deal, for a musical deal. They don't care selling their souls, you know, to, to, to play for the NFA, you know. They don't care selling their, selling their souls to, to, to be a model, to do all different kinds of madness. Some even, don't, some even sell their souls for nothing, man, for just a piece of bread. In which this is what the, 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 the wicked Esau Edom, this is what it's all about, you know. It's going to keep things more straight, more straight, more straight to the point that you only can depend on him for your food, for your water, for your, for your everything, you know. And this is what the government that be, the powers that be, this is what they're planning to do. And then it's the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai using them through his left hand to bring about these things, you know. So things are going to get harder things are going to get harder and that's saying that the world usually say that um, um, only the strong survives you know only the strong in this truth is going to survive during the times that are coming man you know because you're going to find yourself in situations where there is no food to eat there is no water to drink but we that we are the men of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai, we trust in the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai. we believe that in those days the Most High is going to perform miracles for us because it's the same power yesterday, today, and forever. He has always done that miracle, you know. He has always protected us. He has never let us alone, you know. So we're sure the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai is going to provide for us in those days where people are going to be hungry, where people are going to be thirsty. You know, the Most High is going to provide for us, and we're going to be fine, you know. But those who don't have this truth, who don't make this truth, the stability of their times, you know, what's going to happen? They're going to fall. They're going to give they're going to give up they're going to trust in the devil you know in which the bible tells you not to trust in the devil you know they're going to trust in the devil they're going to queue up and get the grain of rice you know inserted under their skin for them to buy and sell you know so this is what it's all coming to be that's why the book of 
let me just, let me just get it real quick. The book of Romans. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai, which is your reasonable service. You know, the Most High Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai, is our reasonable service, man. We are, we are actually under the service of our power, Yahweh, Hashem Yahushai. You know, we don't trust in the so called powers that be that they will take care of us. We trust directly in the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that He's going to take care of us in the times that we're going to be needed. You know, He's always going to be there. He has done miracles, big miracles, man. You know, we were in the wilderness. He made manas to fall from the sky. You know, He made water to gush out from a rock. You know, He led us. You know, He opened the, the, the Red Sea and he made us walk in, in the middle, and he, and He killed all our enemies in the Red Sea. You know. It's still the same power, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. So we're going to trust Him in the times to come. We're not going to put our trust in men because these men are devils, men, the powers that be. So you see, now let's get. Please bear with me. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in all with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. You know what the so-called white man that's in power is trying to do today is that of you know inclining inclining your heart. To lean onto, onto your own understanding, you know, it tells you trust in yourself, believe in your dream, and all this BS, you know. And what he wants you to do is to lean onto his own understanding, his own ways, what he has to give to you. That's what he wants you to lean onto, you know. But the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai tells you, trust in the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, okay, with all thine heart. That's where we get our help from, man, you know. This is where you get your help from. You don't get your help from man. Man has nothing to offer. Go on to they that trust in, in man, that put their trust in men, you know. Go on to them. The Most High Yahweh Hashem is going to destroy them. And those men are going to disappoint them, you know. Verse, verse 11, it says, this is always, um, this is always the book of um, the book of Proverbs, chapter three, verse eleven. It says, "My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be misery of his correction. For whom Yahweh loveth, he correcteth; after as a father, the son in whom he delighted." So you see, in whom the Most High Yahweh Shemiah Shai loveth, he correcteth. You know, so 
coming into this room, yeah, Shai already told us that we're going to catch a lot of hell. People are going to call us mad. People are going to call us different names. You know, all these things are all destined to happen. Let me quickly get. Can. Can. You know, so coming into this troupe is not going to be all roses. You know, it's not going to be all uh, perfect. You know, take off. You know, you're going to be getting that too much money. You're going to be fine and all that thing. You know, no. The most I have Shimi Asha is going to test you. He's going to try you, man. You know, you can't just come into this troupe without being tried. Now, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Chapter 5, I'll start from verse 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You know, you coming into this truth, you know, people start going against you, your family start going against you, all hell start breaking loose, you know. You, 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 different things start happening to you, you know. Don't worry. The Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai got your back. You know, this shouldn't make you, you know, um, this shouldn't make you just become a, a devil and go back to your vomit, you know. The most high Yahweh Bashem Yahushai got your back. And this is a this is a test, man. You know, my son, if you come to serve the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, be ready to be tested. Let me let me get that real quick. Let me get that real quick. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. You know? So if you're coming to serve the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai, be sure that temptation is going to come, because the Most High will try you, will test you. You know, it's just like, for example, you want to play for a top team. You know, you don't just walk into the team and tell them, "Oh, I'm the best runner, I'm the best this." No, they put you to test, man. They try you. They check. They check how long you can hold your breath. They they, they see how long you can you can resist your resistance. They try you. You know, before they they, they declare you as a as a uh, what do you call it as as a part of the team you know that's the same thing that this truth does man when you come into this truth the most High is going to try you and see if you're if you're if you're if you're what you know receiving this truth and walking in this truth man you know so the most I yell by Shem Shai is definitely going to test you when you come into this truth you know it says verse 2 verse 2 then I'll go back to Verse 2 says, Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make no haste in time of trouble. You know? And this is the problem, man. When people start catching all different kinds of hell, when they start feeling hungry, they don't think anymore. They don't reason anymore, you know? They start doing all kinds of different madness, man. They start going back to beg from their, from their enemies. And what does their enemy do? Their enemy poisons them, you know? So you see, that's why it's really, really important that you know this truth. Because this truth is going to be the stability of thy time. The days that are coming are really wicked and terrible days ahead, you know. So that's why you need the most high Yahweh Hashem Shai. Stop playing games now. Start sticking him. Start digging into these videos, taking notes, you know, learning this truth. Because the times are coming in which, you know, we the prophets, we're not going to be able to come outside to teach this truth anymore. We're not going to be able to do the sit downs anymore, you know. So seek the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, you know. Why it's still found now, you know? Because this is this is the, this is the thing, man. You really need to understand what this truth is all about, you know. It's not that when when you start catching all hells, then you just become a demon and you go back to your vomit, you know. It's not done like that. Verse three says, "Cleave unto him and depart not away." That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You have to cleave unto the Most High Yahweh Shai 
and depart not. You know, whatever, no, it doesn't matter whatever the situation is. You know, anything that happens, don't leave this way that you chose. Don't leave this truth, whatever happens. You know, cleave on that name, Yahweh Hashem Shai, and don't fall back into the world like many are doing. You know, there are lots of seducing spirits in these last days, just like the book of Timothy. You know, I'm just all around the place, just bear with me, you know. But it's all part of what, it's all part of it, man. You know, I'm just everywhere. This is the book of First Timothy. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 4. I'll, I'll read verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience served with a hot iron. You know? So you see, the times are coming in which people... They're not going to give heed to this truth anymore, you know. They're going to depart from this truth. And the book of Sirach tells you in verse 3, the second chapter, it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You know. So this scripture is telling you only the strong in this truth, only the strong through the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Hashem El Shai, only those that are ordained are going to survive and make it to the end, man, you know. It's not about, you know, it's not about, you know, all the precepts that you have or everything or knowing how to quote the Bible often and all these things. It's the work, man, you know. All these things count. You know, these are the things that are going to sustain you in the days to come, you know. Verse 4, it says, Whatever is brought unto thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art challenged to a low estate, you know. This is very important because this is the situation that's about to come. People are going to be challenged to a low estate. People are going to find themselves in which there is no food to eat. You know, they can barely find water, you know. And at that time, lots of people are not thinking about the Most High Yahweh Hashem El Shai, you know. They're not thinking of the Most High, you know. They're thinking of going back to their enemies for help, you know. That's why this truth is really important. It's really important you learn these things this time. Understand this truth, you know. So in those days to come, you're not going to be tossed to and fro, you know, like a dried leaf, man. You know. Now, going back to... Did I? I think we're going to come back to this scripture. Going back to the book of... Um, no, before then, let me get the book of Hebrew. Can. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. I read from verse 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom Yahweh Shem Shai loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure the chastening, the most I delight with you as with his sons. 
For what son is he, is he whom the father chasteneth not? So you see, whom the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai loves, he chasteneth, you know? But check out those points, you know? Verse 7, it says, If ye endure chastising, the most I deal it with you. You know? So only those that endure the chastening of the most I, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, the most I is really dealing with those people. If you don't endure, maybe you start catching on hell, then you live the truth, you go out of the truth, you know? The most I is not dealing with you, you know? So this, this is also going to be a test in the time to come because the major tests are the times to come. The times in which the Most High is going to, is going to, you know, is going to retract the food, the water, the everything, you know. You're not going to be living the way you were living. You're not going to have everything in abundance. Everything is going to be measured unto you, you know. At that time, we're going to see who really, who really loves the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushua, with all your hearts, man, you know. And it's not only by speaking, it's not only by sh showing people that you, that you, that you trust, you trust in the Most High. But when the times of testing comes, we, we are going to know who the real men are, you know? I'm saying this because the days ahead are really wicked. The days ahead are terrible, man. There is famine, there is sword, there is destruction coming, okay? Famine, sword, and destruction coming. So... Going back to... I was in Matthew 5. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. You know, because this time is coming in which people are going to speak all different kinds of wickedness, all manners of, of, of lies against us, you know. Because this is what Esau is actually planning to do. Esau is trying to label us, you know, the T, the T, the, the big T, the terror word, you know. Esau is trying to label us, you know, the, 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 the bad people, you know. It's trying to come with all different kinds of wicked wicked judgments against us you know but we're not we're not we're not supposed to worry about all these things it says blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake because it's also going to happen in your in your in, in your circle man in your family the people that are around you that know you it's really going to happen they're going to speak all different kinds of things against you when i came into this truth you know my family members were speaking all different kinds of things against me, you know. They said I, I joined the sect, I joined the cult, I did this, I did that, you know. They were speaking all kinds of wickedness against me, things that they don't know, you know. Verse 12, it says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets we were, which were before you, you know. So when you see these things happen, you need to rejoice, give thanks to the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, because that's how they treated the prophets in the past. And very, very probably, you know, the spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. We come back to our Lord. So if you were, if you were rejected in those past, times past, if you were called different kinds of names, why do you think they wouldn't call you such names this time again? Why do you think people wouldn't revile against you this time again? You know? So this is it, man. You know? Now... Going back to the book of Sirach, the second chapter, I'll read for, from verse 4. It says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. It says, For gold is tried in the fire, 